Okay. So here I thought was a pretty good example of what I was kind of expecting. It didn't necessarily have to look perfect. But you notice what we have here. Okay. We have some pictures. We have headings. Um, in this case, it happened to have like a background image. We have different colors of text. There's attributions for the photos, okay? There's a fair amount of content here, and, you know, several different paragraphs, okay? So, what were we actually looking for? Well, neither of those, I think I closed it down. So, coming over to week nine, I said pick a holiday from that list. And I'm not really looking to see whether people have turned in there or not. That was more of a reminder of you for the due date. I'm looking on code.org itself. Okay, so in order to get the top marks, I need to use both the CSS and the HTML, okay? Those end up being two different files, remember? What does it mean syntax error, minimal syntax error? What's, what's a syntax error? Uh, when, when the code is wrong? No, pretty much. When, when you miss a slash, when you miss a, a closing tag, okay? Or something ends up being pink. Those are syntax errors. So there's minimal syntax errors and the page renders correctly, meaning everything shows up basically the way that it's intended. Does this mean it had to be perfect? No. But all the text is inside of the different elements. Okay? Creating the digital artifact uses at least 10 different CSS properties and styles for both the layout and the text, okay? So 10 different styles and properties uses at least eight different HTML tags to format the page, including multiple sized headings, images, and paragraphs. How about this debugging and clean code? Do you guys, when you design things, do you look at trying to keep everything all nicely aligned and then add content or do you just do the content and then clean it up? Do the content clean up? I think the majority of people would be like that. You just gotta remember to go in and clean it up. Because if you don't, and it looks like a rough draft, it makes it really hard for somebody else to take a look at your work if they need to, if you need to make like one little change and you like having to search. It's like finding a missing semicolon. How do you find a missing semicolon if the semicolon isn't at the end of a line? Now if everything's all nicely aligned, it's very easy to see, oh, that one doesn't have one. I need one there. Okay? So that's what we're looking for. And then you're also trying to make sure that there's no personally identifiable information. I don't want to see, hey, this is my family. My name is Texas. My dad's name is, and my little brother is, and my dog, you know, in our house at, you're like, do we not learn anything from the people with their social media, fake social media accounts? I put a picture of family, but it's not on the internet, and so I could use it. So I understand. I, I really understood that already. But, you know, you're just showing heads, it's time for family. Okay, all content from outside sources is cited with the available information. Give me that attribution to know where this image is coming from. Okay, so let's take a look at this 
So, you know, it looked pretty good. Let, let's see how it stacks up, really, as far as the code goes. Okay, what was the first thing that we had to look for? Do you remember? Let's pull up that rubric again. Doesn't use both CSS and HTML with minimal errors, with everything inside of the elements. Does it use HTML? Yes. 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 Do we see any obvious errors? No. Nope. How did those obvious errors show up? Ping. Right. Ping. Typically, you're going to show the ping. And everything on the page really looked like it was showing up nicely. It didn't look like anything was out of place. Okay, that makes the checks really easy. Does it have CSS? Uh, obviously, we don't have black and white text. You know, all these changes were made that we had stuff for the body, it was a background image. Oh, we didn't learn about that in class. But it was something that we could easily find out how to do. It was one of the challenges. Ah. Okay. Setting up things for the paragraph, for H1, H2, line items, and a bunch of things to set up those images just the way that they want. The border color, style, height, width. Do we have at least eight? No, actually it was 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We're good. Okay. So this is looking really good. This is looking really good. Using at least eight different HTML tags. Well, we got to switch back to the HTML. Do we have eight different ones of those? Well. You have the head, you have the linking to the style sheet, you have the body, header one, paragraph, line item. And you like how he uses line items? In order to create this little thing here rather than breaks. You know, so all of this is fairly well formatted, I think. I don't see a lot of white space. I feel like there could have been more space in between the different sections. This kind of all runs together, but it is all very nicely aligned. Okay. Um, any identifiable information? Did you see any? No. Mm -hmm. uh, I really don't. It's stuff about you know having fun outside, admiring the birth of Jesus, family time. Sounds pretty good. And then attributions. Do you see attributions? Yeah. Yeah, that, the one thing is the, these weren't by the pictures. Like it would have been nice for this attribution, I think, to be right aligned somehow, to be right underneath. You know, you would have to take that particular text block and move it to the right so it was underneath. Otherwise, it just shows up. Um, right there. I think it was part of the paragraph sets. It might have been. And it, it's not like a big deal. That you can find the information. That's just one thing that would have made it just that much better. Uh, it's a matter of figuring out how to do that. Um, one thing that I, I've noticed that people haven't tried to work out so far this year is like tables. You can actually like put in a table in such a way that you can trigger up the spacing of things by putting it in a particular cell on that table. It's another one of those things that you guys can look at. Okay. So overall, it's looking really, really good. Okay. Some of your web pages are not here. Okay. Some of them need some additional work. And so you're going to need to make sure that before this weekend occurs, and when I'm probably going to take a look at these, you make some additions because this is a major break. This was supposed to be like, hey, everything that I know and how you know know how to do about web pages, I've already included in it here. Question? I did one, but like if I wanted to change something about it, make sure it happens before this weekend. Okay. So here's where we are today. Um, 
we really um, were going to, we, we finished up 13, or should be finishing up, okay? I'm skipping over 14 and 15, calling it, hey, this is not going to help us this year. And I went straight to 60. So if I go to 60, you guys don't see much. This is what you see. You know, how do we find relevant and trustworthy information on the internet? Do you just ask Siri and believe everything that she says? How do you know that something is trustworthy? Okay, so I might want to look at multiple sources. So I'm not just going to go with the first thing that I see. Okay, how else am I going to know that something is relevant and trustworthy? Have you ever like Googled something for your homework and found something completely unrelated? Yes. Hello. What are we doing? Just saying hi. I don't know if it came up. Huh? Oh, I was just looking at your screen trying to work out what's going on. It's how science is. Ah. Okay. It, it doesn't really help that we have the, the video from like Mr. Reed's class. I was thinking it was coming from Mrs. Graham. Okay. So we're going to be looking for multiple sources. Does the type of source make a difference to you guys? Like what, who, who's doing the answer? You know, it's like, well, why do schools not like using Wikipedia? Because uh, you can easily change it. Yeah, like uh, anyone can go in and edit it. Okay, and we we're always being concerned about the sources. Um, how do I know that I've reached the right thing, you know, when I Google something like how long it's going to take to, for us to get to Mars? Mm -hmm. Like, how, how many different answers do you think there might be out there? One for every system. Nearly. And, and it all depends on who's doing the publishing, right? Yeah. You can have someone that just goes on to like answers.com and they just like make up something. People that go onto Wikipedia and they edit something and they just make like some random changes versus, you know, maybe you have NASA that's, you know, done some extensive research into that and, and they provide their answer and their background. So you have to consider the source, where it's coming from, and is it even what you want? Okay? Let's take a look at this. Um, Get you guys back. So what we're looking at is those sources and research. Well, let me plug in too. Hi, my name is John. I lead the search and machine learning teams at Google. Well, I think it's uh, amazingly inspiring that people all over the world uh, turn to search engines to ask trivial questions and incredibly important questions. So it's a huge responsibility to give them the best answers that we can. Hi, uh, my name is Akshaya, and I work on a big search team. There are many times where we'll start looking into artificial intelligence and machine learning, but we have to address how are the users going to use this? Because end of the day, we want to make an impact to society. Let's ask a simple question. How long does it take to travel to Mars? Where did these results come from? And why was this listed before the other one? So what do you think? Without knowing any additional information, why is it that one appears before the other? What was that? You think it might be the most reliable? What did you say? You didn't say anything? The most popular? Is popular the same as reliable? No. It might end up being a mix of the two. You know, reliable and popular are not the same thing. But wouldn't it be good if it was both? 
Okay, well, let's take a look. Before the other one. Okay, let's dive in and see how the search engine turned your request into a result. The first thing you need to know is that when you do a search, the search engine isn't actually going out to the World Wide Web to run your search in real time. And that's because there's over a billion websites on the internet and hundreds more being created every single minute. So if the search engine had to look through every single site to find the one you wanted, it would just take forever. So to make your search faster, search engines are constantly scanning the web in advance to record the information that might help with your search later. That way, when you search about travel to Mars, the search engine already has what it needs to give you an answer in real time. Here's how it works. The internet is a web of pages connected to each other by hyperlinks. Search engines are constantly running a program called Aspire that crawls through these web pages to collect information about them. Each time it finds a hyperlink, it follows it until it has visited every page it can find on the entire internet. For each page that Spider visits, it records any information it might need for a search. So how do you think it's finding that information on your web pages? The ones that we designed? Hyperlinks. You think through hyperlinks? Where, where is the spider going to look for the information? Everywhere. Uh, not just everywhere. Adding it to a special database called a search index. Now, let's go back to that search from earlier and see if we can figure out how the search engine came up with the results. When you ask, how long does it take to travel to Mars, the search engine loops each of those words in the search index to immediately get a list of all the pages on the internet containing those words. But just looking for these search terms. Now, to some extent, things like this are actually trying to kind of bug me. When I see some people do searches, do you think there might be a slightly faster way? Now, you notice that each of these matches like that word, how many results? That word, how many results? How many are we talking about? These are our hundreds. These are our thousands. These are our millions. This is eight billion. Do you have to type out the whole sentence for the, for the computer to understand you? No. You really don't. I, I would honestly go like, how long travel to Mars? Oh yeah. You know, if, if you put in just the keywords that you're looking for, because that's actually what it's looking for too, is those words and how frequently they appear, and then try to match that up. And so putting in extra words like the, you know, the, if, and, those actually would slow things down. Could return millions of pages so the search engine needs to be able to determine the best matches to show you first this is where it gets tricky because the search engine may need to guess what you're looking for each search engine uses its own algorithm to rank the pages based on what it thinks you want the search engine's ranking algorithm might check if your search term shows up in the page okay. title ah. it might check if all of the words show up next this. to each other mm -hmm. so that page ranking that ranking is what allows us to go, okay, show this first, show this second, show this third, show this fourth. They use a particular algorithm, a particular process that it's going to show a particular order of things. But do you know that a page rank is not really ranking the page? That doesn't even sound right. Page rank isn't actually like saying, oh, this particular page is number one, like based on the popularity or anything. That's not why it's called a page rank. Or any number of other calculations that help it better determine which pages you'll want to see and which you won't. Google invented the most famous algorithm for choosing the most relevant results for a search by taking into account how many other web pages link to a given page. The idea is that if lots of websites think that a web page is interesting, then it's probably the one you're looking for. This algorithm is called PageRank, 
Don't yeah, be I'm pussy. Gonna, I'm gonna back up. This so. algorithm is oh, called no. Keep driving. I'm backing up something again. So remember, we talked about reliable animal most popular. What's this? This is unreliable, unpopular. unpopular. Here, this might be uh, more reliable, more popular, but the more pages that link to a particular site that, that count this as you know good information, that's what's gonna show up first. Oh. So you want, you know, if you want more people going to your site, you've gotta get more pages to link to your site. You need more pages to link to you. And they need to be able to find you. Now the next is about the page rank. Now listen carefully. But a web page is interesting, and it's probably the one you're looking for. This algorithm was called page rank. Not because it ranks web pages, but because it was named after its inventor, Larry Page, who's one of the founders of Google. So what is page rank? It's the rank of the website using the method developed by Mr. Page. And everyone thought it was ranking the pages just in and of itself. Because the website often makes money when you visit it, spammers are constantly trying to find ways to gain the search algorithm so that their pages are listed higher in the results. Search engines regularly update their algorithms to prevent fake or untrustworthy sites from reaching the top. Ultimately, it's up to you to keep an eye out for these pages that are untrustworthy. So, how often do you look at about the top five things in your search? Yeah, there's a bunch of us that are probably guilty of that. You search and you scan for whatever's on your screen. And if it doesn't show up on that screen, what do you do? There's nothing out there. Eh, there's nothing out there. Eh, let me try a different search. Uh, let me scroll. Oh, page. I suppose I could look at a page too. So what these spammers try to do is they actually try to game the, the algorithm so they can figure out how to get at that top so that they can get to you. So that you're going to look at their stuff. You're going to link through to, to, through to your stuff. How do you think they could game the system? Trying out different websites and then trying again. No, like how would they be able to get the, whatever they put up there to show up higher? If they made it fit the criteria, but like without having to make it, like all these other people, it just fits the criteria. Uh -huh. They're not trying. But if you were to try, you could put it up there easily. Okay. So where do you think the spider is getting the information? And where, how does the spider know what's on your page? Where is it going to be looking? Trustworthy by looking at the web address and making sure it's a reliable source. Search programs are always evolving to improve the algorithms so that okay, we find better results, faster results than the competitors. Today's search engines even use information that you haven't explicitly provided to help you narrow down your search. So for example, if you did a search for dog parks, many search engines would give you results for all the dog parks nearby, even though you didn't type in your location. Modern search engines also understand more than just the words on a page, but what they actually mean in order to find the best one that matches what you're looking for. For example, if you search for fast picture, it will know you're looking for an app view. But if you search for large picture, it will find a few options for your kitchen. To understand the words better, we use something called machine learning, a type of artificial intelligence. It enables search algorithms to search uh, not just individual letters or words in the page, but understand the underlying meaning of the words. The internet is growing exponentially. Uh, the teams that design search engines do our jobs right. The information you want should always be just a few keystrokes away. Okay, so where do you think that they're going to be finding information? Yeah. It's going to be, well, yes, but the internet, like how does the spider get its information? It's looking at your headlines. Yeah. It's looking at keywords on your page. It also looks for 
about the keywords that you provided in your head on your HTML. So you want a good headline in there because that's another place where they search. Okay? So I want you guys to do some quick research for me. Okay? I want you guys to find for me how long would it take to walk from here to the Capitol building in Austin? The state capitol building. Uh, I'll, I'll try to find it on my phone, okay? So I want to go from here to the Texas state capitol. I'm going to say directions, and I'm going to say walking. Which the Texas State Capitol building in Austin. 56 hours. 56 hours? I think they got it off. I have two days and 11 hours. That's the same thing, isn't it? No. I'm going to typing That's typing pretty close. Christian school. Two days is 48. That's 57 hours. Yeah. You really don't. So if I left right now and I started walking and I never took any breaks, and people. never slept, and I could be there for supper on Friday. It says, it says 55 hours. You, you have 50, From how do you have 55? I have 57, he's got 58. I just, what's your source? I looked up precisely, Westbury Kirk. It, it, I mean, what, what's your source? I don't, I don't really Google know. Google Maps. Wait, uh, so you went and used the Google Maps, because when you open up Google, what did you use? The same thing. <laughs> it's 56. Uh, yeah. Maybe because we have slightly different locations. Very, very 55. I've, I looked up from 68, It depends which road you go. Maybe. You have an extra half mile. And I don't know why. And then for me, Mine's at 171 miles. So mine is even longer, which makes sense. Let me I see. see. It does depend on the routes that you take. Let me see. You know, if I were to say, hey, drive, switch it to drive, guys. Switch it to drive. Two hours and 43 minutes. Okay, but notice like here, I have a three hour. I have two hours and 43 minutes. Three different options depending upon whether or not I use tolls. Actually, all three of them are with tolls. Um, but it's going to depend on which which range of roads I want to drive on. Like maybe I now, hey, although this is clear right now, this particular road normally has accidents during this time of day. So I don't, don't want to do that because I'll run into an accident later. Or maybe you're using a rental car and you don't want to do tolls. I've done that before. And so I have to go, okay, avoid the tolls. It even says when it's construction. And it will even say it's construction. And it says, hey, you, you can do this in two hours and two hours and 45 minutes to avoid tolls. But there is a faster route if you want to do tolls. But even between, you know, using you know, the same type of devices, using the same software, we're not necessarily always getting the same answer. But it's within a range of what we consider acceptable. Can you guys figure out which day of the week you were born? Yeah. Search that up. You already know? Yeah. And that's just, hey, I know I was born on a Thursday? Ah. Hey, give to me a nursery. Now, do, do you need to check to make sure your mom was right? <laughs> Wouldn't you be shocked, huh? So, I was doing this with um, the online kids, literally just before you guys came in. And, you know, so someone says, well, I'm born in 2006. And so you come here and say, you know, I was born January 14, 
2006, day of the week. And you notice that it pops up right at the top. Okay. Now, let's look for, you know, maybe we're, we're going to look back to someone that was born in 1972. Okay. Say that this was January 14th, 1972. Oh, it actually did it this time. The way that I was doing it earlier, it didn't actually show stuff up here. Maybe I have to try this again. What day of the week was January 12, 1972? Oh, 73. Okay, I don't know what's changed. I really don't. Because earlier, it would not show up in these results. I would have to go through different uh, pages in order to get to other databases. It was not showing up here. And our guess was that, you know, the older the date before, you know, internet became common, you know, common usage, um, you had to go to these other sites. And then since internet's become more common, you know, those later dates would show up here. But now it's showing up either which way. Right. Up, how old is Michael James Jr. Jr.? All the way back to 1694, huh? Okay. I want you guys to locate an image of West Bay Christian School. If you look up West Bay Christian School and you try to find an image, do you think you can find an image? You found one? Skateboard. So I, it won't tell me what on which day of the week were you born. It just gives me a nursery rhyme, apparently. Huh. See, Can you find an good. image of a dog on a red skateboard? Can you find a Creative Commons photo of a dog? What should we do on the uh, with, on which day of the week were you born if you can't find it? What do you mean you can't find it? You should be able to find it. <laughs> you really should. I found one on a pink skateboard. Yeah. Yeah. Pink, pink doesn't count. There's not on a red skateboard. Oh, yeah. It, it, pink. There, there isn't a dog on a red skateboard? Oh, what? No. That is not a pink skateboard. Comment. It's like other. Ah, uh, other, other creatures. Is dogs on a skateboard? So, in order to have a Creative Commons one, you'd have to find a red skateboard that you could edit with a dog and mash them together in order to make that happen. Uh huh. You may. So, did you put the images on that? Or is this just. Wait, so what do we do for. I'm so confused. We, what we were doing was we're trying different things on the scavenger hunt. Okay. So, so we, you can use any search tools, but make sure that you have trustworthy sources and record what search tool you use to find each of these. And then once you're done with that, what I need you to do next is there is a second activity, which is this right here, where I want you to pick a particular topic have three questions about that topic, and then find me four different sources that provide you with some information to answer those questions. And rank 
the particular URL for the trustworthiness? Is it low, medium, or high, and why do you think so? I don't know which one it is, but there, there's plenty. It's either Pizza City or Water for me. Honestly, the best thing to do is you want to go to Google Classroom and you'll see for Lesson 16. There's this one and the Internet Scavenger Hunt. So do we have another school somewhere else? Yeah, it's more like that. Yeah. Like, but it's not a Christian. It's just Westbury. Well, I know that one, but it, like, it has the Westbury Christian one right there. It's, well, yeah, that, that's us. That's the church. Yeah. That's the church up front. That's our sign. That's the church. But there is like the Westbury Baptist across the way. Yeah. It kind of is. There is Westbury High School, which is over on Chimney Rock. Oh, it just looks like it all connected buildings. It doesn't look like school. No, in this case, it's just what you see is a lot of tree right in front of the church. Right? Why is this in Westbury Christian? Don't know. I don't know why some of those show up there either. You know, they may not necessarily be related. or another way to add some stock.
pretty sure people are kind of looking forward to it. And it's going to be 68 degrees. And this one was Google search engine again. Same year. I was born in 2007. Oh, wait. Oh, it is a <laughs> Harry Potter on the 